P3 needs us to review the web design proposals with others to identify and inform improvements. Quite simply, ask other people to use the website or to, sorry, to look at your designs and ask them what they think. Ask your teacher, ask your friends. You could even do one yourself. Look over your design and ask them to give you feedback. What needs to be improved? So what I've done is I have reviewers. So for example, as you can see on the left here, I've got my reviews. And I've got reviewer one, two, three, four, five, and number six is myself. Simply have them say some stuff about your, your designs. It doesn't have to be um, very detailed. It could be bullet points. It could be a few sentences. So my first reviewer, number one, was Bob the Builder. I said, I liked that you showed both mobile and desktop versions. It might be worthwhile speaking about the colors you will be using, the size of the images, and if you can get that, get as much detail as possible in your um, text boxes is what this person is trying to say. You have the social media icons on some pages. Maybe you should have those icons or those things on all pages so people don't have to keep going back and forth and clicking, okay, where do I need to go to get the social media icon again? Typically speaking, the contact information is, is at the very top of every page at the very bottom of every page. So I could use this one as well. The next one is from Erin Yeager, review two. The mobile version of the website seems to have a lot of blank space on a page. Maybe for the mobile version, have a lot less information in general. So you don't have as much blank um, sections. So maybe just have one page for a mobile instead. Number three, number four. So hopefully you get the idea of what you have to do. For mine, the last thing I've actually done, um, where I said things to improve. So after all my reviews, again, have your friends make up your reviews. After all my reviews, what I've done, I've gone ahead and done two examples. The first example is using a table format, right? It can be anything. You decide which is best for you. And down here, I've got um, just a text description again, but they're more or less the same thing. So this is the improvement. So after you've gotten every, every um, review from everyone, you make a nice curated list of the ones that you will do and the ones that you won't do. There will be overlaps. So this person might say, have the the social media stuff on all the pages another two people might say it and that's perfectly fine where you have overlaps you only have it here once so for example here i have match color scheme to game or company so so the color scheme of the website the logo the design should be matched to the game of the company so gta 5 to me i don't know looks bluish grayish type of color so i'm going to use those colors for example right next um, I have yes or no. Yes or no meaning, am I going to actually do that thing? And if I am going to do it, I give a reason why. If I'm not going to do it, I give a reason why. So here I have most other websites have their color scheme matched up with the actual website. So when you go onto the Rockstar website, you might see the Rockstar logo and the Rockstar colors on the, that website look pretty similar to what they have in game, what they have on their apps, what they have on their websites. looks pretty similar. So Having a consistent design all the way through makes a lot of sense. I've listed a few others here. I'm not going to go through all of these. So this is how I would do my table format, right? You can do a table format like this. It really doesn't matter how you do it. You probably don't even have to be as detailed as, as I've been. So you can do a table format like this. Or what you can do is do a written one like this. Either way works fine. So improvement number one. So again, this these two sections here, the table... Oh, and the section below are exactly the same thing. I've just done it a slightly different way. So for improvement one, I've said match color scheme. Choice, yes, that means I am, I am going to do it. And then I have a description under here. Most other websites, this should be websites, have their color scheme matched. It should be matched up with the actual website. So again, the Xbox colors are typically green, right? When you go onto the Microsoft website, the Xbox section is green. The PlayStation colors are typically blue. When you go onto the PlayStation website and you go to the PlayStation 4 section, maybe it's blue, so on and so forth. So you try to match up your designs with what you know the company's colors are, even if you don't use a logo, right? I don't have a logo for mine, but I'm going to try and figure out what the, what, what, what the Grand Theft Auto um, colors are and use those colors in my designs. I might not show them. So let me scroll back up. I might not show them exactly as they should be here. But at least in the text boxes next to it, I should say, okay, color will be blue, text will be white, font will be Arial, size will be 12, 
um, image would be animated GIF, so give a lot more detail in this section here. So let me scroll down again. So again, the next one I have is improvement number two, have videos on each game feature. And I've said no for that choice. I'm not going to do that. Uh, the game has so many features. Having a video on each one would not only make the website load a lot slower because videos are quite large, but it would have either a lot more content and more pages. That's not something we ideally want to do. So it's perfectly fine to turn down some suggestions. However, for you to actually get the mark for P3, where is it again? Let me scroll back up. Uh, you have to identify and inform improvements. So these things that I have in my table or the things I have under here, these are going to be improvements, possibly improvements. And you can turn down some of them because not everything is going to be an improvement. And you can accept some of them because some of them will be improvements. So it says for number four, let me jump to number four. Put information in the text box about the content. Yes. So what that means is what I just explained essentially where if I'm pointing at a particular thing like this about a section here, I'm going to have every single thing about that section in my text box. So one of the reasons behind this is that when I give this to someone who's actually going to develop a website, I might not do it myself, for example. Typically speaking, in, in a company, you have designers and developers slightly different in terms of they don't always do both roles. You might only have a designer or you might only have a developer or sometimes they, they do the same thing. If I have very, very detailed designs, what I can actually do is hand it over to someone who's relatively experienced and they'll then be able to sit down and based on my designs and my detail and my information I've left in, they will be able to create whatever I designed. That's a massive, massive benefit. So let me scroll down. After that, there's not really anything else. After that, we move on to M2. So I'm going to do M2 in a separate video. And M2 is to justify the design decision, explaining how they will meet the user's needs and be fit for purpose. So, the, so we're going to go back to the requirements. We're going to look at the stuff that we've said that we are going to do or we are going to improve or we are going to implement and say, how does this actually help the person who wants the website? Does the person who wants the website, did they actually ask for this feature? And if they did, say how it's going to help them. So remember, P3 says we have to identify and inform improvements. So we have to identify the improvements and say which ones we are going to actually choose, which improvements we're going to make. Now, I'm going to go an extra step here. Remember in my previous video, I think I said web design version one. So what I'm going to do for this one is maybe add a section at the very end of my document just before M2. And I'm going to say uh, web, what did I say? Web design version two is what I'm going to label this one. Reason being, I'm going to have my second version here with the improvements I said yes to in the previous part. So for example, I said, put information in a text box about the content. I said yes to that. So I'm going to uh, do that web page again, for example, come back here and I'm going to have all the details in the actual text box. Here I've done only the first page. So for banner, I've added the resolution of the banner is going to be 1024 by 200. It's going to be PNG format. The only thing I've added here was images from previous games. That's the thing that needs to be in the design so that if I, again, if I hand this to someone else who doesn't know what they should do, they can probably whip something up relatively quickly. In navigation menu, uh, I said it will have rollover buttons. The normal color is going to be blue. The rollover color should be some gray. The text color should be black and the font type should be Montserrat. Now, what this means is that when I move my mouse over the button, the color where the text is will change to a slightly different color. So it will originally be blue like here maybe, and then it will change to gray. The, um, the text color doesn't change, and the, te and the text type, so the font type doesn't change. Only that thing will change. Uh, under here, I've simply added image carousel. So this will be a carousel. Things will be swiping across. The images will cycle through. It's going to be PNG and JPEG formats, five second timer for each cycle. Again, just adding more detail is you improving your design. Remember, your design is saying what you actually want to do. You actually don't have to do everything you say in your design, but at the end, you have to justify why you haven't done it. Next, we have for the text part down here, font type Montserrat, font color black. The text introduces the user. Okay, so this is the same. Nothing here has changed, but what has changed is I've actually put in the social media icons or the contact buttons. So if I scroll back up to my version one design, look at, actually, let me just copy this down here just so you can see what they look like. So that's what it looked like before. 
this is what it looks like now. Very, very tiny changes. But again, this is just a home page. I'm going to do the five pages of the website again. You, if you didn't do all five pages, don't do all five pages again. Maybe do three or four, however many you did before. Do that now to show the improvements that you have made. Again, this is my before. This is my after. I have a bit more detail, not too much more, but it doesn't matter. Once you have gotten the reviews, looked at the reviews and say, oh yeah, this one makes sense. That one makes sense. Let me do these then. Once you've done that and actually decided which ones you're going to do, that's perfectly fine. That's you actually completing P3. I've completed my second page, which is my About Us page, and I've done exactly the same thing like I did before. Simply added more detail to each text box so that when the, the, the actual developer gets this and they're actually doing what they need to do based on what I think the end result should look like, they have all the details they need. For this part, I have some text describing the role of this person and who they are in general, right? Uh, it's going to be PNG or JPEG image. The font type of the text needs to be Montserrat. The font color needs to be black. And the background of the text needs to be some gray color. Let me put light gray. Right now, the, the developer can decide which light, which exact color code of light gray they want to use. But light gray is fine. So again, this is just you saying, uh, getting the reviews from people, looking over the reviews, saying what you're actually going to do in changing the design and doing it. So this is my page again. This was the original page for uh, the home page. This was the updated one, just a little bit more detail. This was the second page. Maybe I should copy the second page just before this as well. This is what it looks like. A little bit more detail versus what it was before. And that's it. That's your P3 finish. You go through and do that for all the pages you have again. And that's it. You're done.